In my recent video comparing my experiences with the RTX 3080 and my RX 6800 XT and evaluating, you know, how much better or is the RTX 3080 better than the 6800 XT? Well, I had a whole bunch of details and thoughts. My biggest takeaway was that the number one advantage for NVIDIA is absolutely their DLSS technology. Yeah, sure, they have better ray tracing support and might scale a bit better at higher resolutions. But honestly, at least on these current generation of GPUs, the ray tracing wasn't at a point where for me, the performance hit is usually worth the cost. And even DLSS is not perfect. But in my opinion, it offers a huge forward thinking value in terms of the longevity of the card. Now that is assuming that future games years from now still have DLSS support. Um, but if you imagine DLSS the way I think about it, which is if there's a graphics performance option in a game that I could just turn down and yes, my image looks worse. And for those of you saying that DLSS looks better than the native image, that's if you're looking at still screenshots. In motion, while there can be certain elements that can look better than native, especially in a game where it's replacing a bad temporal anti-aliasing solution with a better anti-aliasing solution through DLSS, Overall, I have never seen a game where I overall thought it looked better using DLSS. So it is turning down a graphic setting is the way I like to think about it, but it can often offer a huge performance boost for turning down that setting. And as a lot of people know, gaming at high instead of ultra is often the way to go. And so you might think about using DLSS in the future once your graphics card isn't able to play at reasonable settings uh, you know, that you're happy with, which is great. Now, AMD responded with FSR, which in some ways at least helped and has some advantages as well. FSR 1.0 is extremely easy to implement and AMD has even added a version of it using RSR through their drivers, although that's a, an inferior implementation of FSR with the advantage of you know, broader support. Due to, uh, by, why is it inferior? Well, it runs at the end of the rendering process, post HUD and, and post processing effects and all of that. Anyway, we don't need to get out into that in this video. But while well, FSR does what DLSS does in the sense that it makes the image look slightly worse in order to increase your performance, the difference, especially at lower resolutions, and by lower, I mean really anything before below 4K, is pretty night and day between FSR and DLSS. DLSS does do a much better job, and especially when you are upscaling from a lower, like much lower rendering resolution, DLSS does a much better job. So honestly, the performance gains that you get out of DLSS can be so dramatic for such a small image quality loss that even though personally I'll try to avoid using it unless I have to, it really can't be ignored when you're deciding between which GPUs to buy. And I think it absolutely should be factored into pricing. I think uh, if everything else is identical between the two GPUs, if one has DLSS and the other does not, you should not pay the same amount for the one that doesn't have DLSS. So is FSR 2.0 gonna finally give us a competitor to that? Well. AMD is going to be releasing more information about it at the Game Developers con uh, Conference this week. Should be coming up in the next few days, but already we've had some teasers and some information about it. The main thing is that their version will not use machine learning or require machine learning acceleration in any way. This could allow it to support a much broader set of GPUs than NVIDIA does with its limiting of DLSS to their RTX cards and requiring the tensor cores. However, this could also mean that it maybe won't look quite as good as DLSS. Although to be honest, I've always questioned how much of DLSS image quality is based on its temporal data and how much of it is actually based on a machine learning algorithm. And there are other algorithms uh, for upscaling that you know aren't machine learning, like FSR 1.0. So I think what AMD is doing here is going with a good temporal upscaler without the machine learning, but there could be some other kinds of sharpening algorithms and things going on with this upscaler 
that honestly, if it can just get really close to what DLSS does, it should be a huge improvement over 1.0. And you can see as I'm talking here, I've been uh, splicing in some footage. Now, what is this footage? So AMD at this point has released a video uploaded at 4K, and it's just of Deathloop. And it's showing FSR 1.0 versus 2.0 and versus native 4K rendering. And I believe this was all captured on an R9, not R9, Jesus, <laughs> on an RX 6900 XT, and it does have ray tracing enabled and all that. Now, the problem for a lot of people viewing this content is that if you want to watch it in motion, you're watching a 4K video, and a lot of you have a 1080p or 1440p display, so you can't really dig into the details, which is why I've been trying to show you the zoomed in results. Also, at it's it's unfortunate when you have to watch something like this as a screenshot, because if you're on a 1080p monitor, a lot of people might just look at a screenshot. But what, some of the issues with temporal upscaling tend to occur in motion more than they do in standstill images. That's where you usually get those arguments that like DLSS looks better than native, because in a standing still image, you can sometimes see it reconstruct fine line details in the distance better than the native 4K render. And that can be true of other temporal upscaling. And I think we even do see a few uh, spots in this footage where that's happening, because that's where I need to bring up one of the um, downsides to this footage. For one thing, it's only one game in a very limited scenario, so I'm sure this is a cherry-picked result to showcase this in the best light possible. Also, notice how slowly the camera moves. This does not at all simulate what it's going to actually be like to play a game, with this technology enabled. And a lot of times with DLSS, for example, in Cyberpunk, when I'm actually playing the game, if I enable DLSS and I look at some of the fine lines uh, in the pavement and a lot of other places, when I move the camera, there's extremely obvious aliasing happening. But when I keep the st camera standing still or moving extremely slowly, this is much less apparent. So I think that this footage could actually be hiding just as much as it's showing. But what we can see clearly is that FSR 2.0 image quality comparison to 1.0 is absolutely night and day. Now it only shows us the quality preset and the performance preset. I would have been interested in seeing ultra quality, but I can tell you that the quality looks significantly better at 2.0, and at performance, it's like a joke to even compare them. The FSR 2.0 performance mode is actually looking extremely close to the native uh, 4K image, despite being all the way down at performance mode, which assuming we're getting the same um, upscaling percentages as we did uh, with 1.0, I believe this would be an upscale from 1080p. Whereas the um, you know FSR 1.0 performance mode, I would really only use that if I'm using a 1080p graphics card to maybe play on a 4K TV at a distance, and maybe the performance mode upscale looks a bit better than um, you know just playing it at 1080p and using the display's upscaling. So. Uh, I'm really excited for this technology. It does look good, but it could also be kind of dead on arrival if it doesn't have broad game support. Because DLSS, when it first came out, had extremely limited support, but is starting to get added to tons of games. And as far as major graphically demanding AAA releases go, it's seeming like having DLSS is more of the norm and not having DLSS is more of the exception. However, there definitely are still games launching with, without DLSS and without FSR support, Elden Ring being one of them. I'm hoping that when the uh, ray tracing patch that has been promised, although no ETA on that that I'm aware of, comes out, maybe we'll also get some kind of upscaling technique. So. Right now, the only info we have is that this is apparently running in Deathloop, but I'm sure it's going to be running in more games than just Deathloop, but how many and how long will it take to get into those? Because 
The big advantage with FSR 1.0 was the ease of implementation. Because FSR 2.0 is a temporal upscaler, it is going to require that temporal data from the game engine. And so there is going to be more limitations on games you could use this in, although it seems to me that any game that could support DLSS should have that, you know, should be able to support FSR 2.0 but it would, I think, require more effort from developers. I'm hoping that AMD is able to get this into a lot of game engines. Now, the other thing I'm curious about is just how this compares to the temporal upscaling we're seeing in Unreal Engine 5, which seems really, really good. And I've heard that AMD even helped work on that technology. I actually think this maybe is roughly the same thing, to be honest. And I think that that could be a good thing because really a lot of games have had decent temporal upscaling, but just haven't had a name brand attached to it like DLSS and FSR uh, does. Because realistically, one of the things that's happened lately with this uh, craze for upscaling techniques is it's been marketed better than it used to be. Because, uh, you know, in a lot of games that had especially a temporal upscaler, you could play the game at like 85 or 90% of the native resolution, have it look almost identical to the original and get a significant performance boost. And that's been a thing for a while. Um, whereas I think with DLSS and then AMD launching FSR to kind of compete with it, a lot of what's happened here is just kind of getting the word out and a, and a marketing move on this kind of technology, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Uh, anyway, so I really think that a lot of the future, you know, comparisons between these cards are going to come down to if FSR 2.0 is at least almost as good as DLSS, which in these screenshots at least, I would say I think it is. But again, this could be just a cherry-picked result. We also need to see what kind of performance boost we're getting. Is it as good of a performance boost as DLSS? Could it be better? Does the machine learning algorithm actually require some extra headroom and maybe allow FSR 2.0 to you know, give you a bigger boost? Or maybe uh, if it doesn't take much extra processing, maybe you could render at a higher resolution. For example, if it could run at like 1600p and give you the same percentage boost that DLSS quality is doing at 1440p upscaling to 4K, that type of a thing. You know, there's a lot of question marks here because not having the machine learning al algorithm can be a disadvantage, but it could also be an advantage. Now, I also expect this, since it is a temporal upscaling technique, to have the same disadvantages that we see with other ones, including DLSS, which is that there can be artifacts added in, some ghosting of images, and, and other, other issues as well. So I don't expect this to be perfect. I, I really think, again, that the biggest thing is going to come down to support. If this can be roughly as good as DLSS, at least close, maybe better, that'd be the wild card, although I, I would just take close, and get anywhere near that level of support. So if major AAA graphically demanding titles that launch with DLSS also have FSR 2.0, or another quality temporal upscaler like the one in the Unreal Engine, then I think we'll be in good shape. Another wild card here is Intel's XCSS technology, which should have fallback support to NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. In the end, I would be really excited to see an open technology kind of win out and be the default support so that game graphics menus and developers don't have to deal with three different upscaling techniques. Although, you know, I, I guess if they were built into the engine, if it's just easy, if, if, if they just get added into the engine with uh, as being an easy addition, I think that that would be, you know, maybe not the end of the world. What do you guys think about this? I'm really excited about it myself, and I think that the other big news is that this is coming before the launch of RDNA 3. So as long as that release date hits with quarter 2, 2022, that means this must be supporting at least RDNA 2, and I would hope that it would be uh, you know backwards compatible on more GPUs because 
That is, again, one of the big selling points of FSR 1.0. Sound off in the comments section and feel free to click the join button if you want to help financially support the channel. Some of you already have and a huge thank you to all of you who have done that. There's various little perks and things and all of that. And as always, I hope that all of you have an excellent day.